Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. How do I begin? How do I begin? Do I say good morning when it's 11.59 a.m.? I mean, that seems weird. I mean, I guess technically I should say good morning, everyone, but I, I can't. So do I wait? Do, do we wait? Do we wait like 40 more seconds, 30 more seconds? Do we wait? Come on. We have to. We have to. We have to. We have to. Maybe. Maybe. Do we? Do we wait? All right. I'm hitting the microphone. All right. Hang on. We're waiting. We're waiting. I, I can't say good morning at 11.59 a.m. I can't. It just seems too weird. Like it, it's less than 30 seconds till it's the afternoon. Isn't it weird how time works? Right. I, I know you really don't care. I, I'm waiting. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Come on. Come on, time. <laughs> Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It is Monday, March the 27th, 2023. It is currently 12 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the Theology Central Studio located right here in Abilene, Texas. And because it's Monday... You know what that means. We have a new week of Bible study in front of us. And I don't really know how to how to clean all of this up or fix all of this. I've been talking about our Bible study exercise. Feels like we were on a road trip and I mean we had our, our GPS told us exactly where to go. We had the entire trip clearly mapped out. We had no problems. It was going to be a, it was going to be a smooth road trip, right? Through specific chapters of the gospel of John, but you, but me, now you're, you're the passenger. I'm the driver. I'm driving along. And all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, wait, 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 look, 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 exit, exit. We've got to go see this. We've got to go see. Ooh, look at this. Oh, look at that. And I keep taking these exits and you're in the back seat going, what are you doing? It was a simple road trip through some individual chapters in the Gospel of John. It was going to be simple. It was going to be straightforward. It was going to be beneficial. It was going to be wonderful. It was going to be great. And now you have us 50 miles away from the highway and some little small town looking at armadillos. What what, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I know, I, I apologize. I'm so sorry. And then to make matters worse, yesterday at Victory Baptist Church, I arrived at church. I had it clearly mapped out that for the second hour, the first hour was going to we were going to we, we were going to work on law and gospel. Second hour, we were going to do some work on the Gospel of John for our Bible study exercise. Right? That's what I. I I show up. I'm sitting in the sound booth. I'm sitting in the sound booth, and I'm like, okay, all right, law and gospel, all right. In fact, I have the book right here, God's No and God's Yes. I'm looking over the book, and I'm like, okay, I got John, I got the Gospel of John and all the information right here, okay? And then all of a sudden, I'm like, nope, change of plans. I mean, literally like five minutes before I'm supposed to walk up to the pulpit, I'm like, all right, we're changing everything. Guys, it's going to be about five or 10 minutes. I got to change everything. So then I'm changing everything, and I and I I go live, and I'm like, okay, guys, Today, we're going to spend three hours today looking at baptism in the scriptures. We're going to do a complete scripture overview of every scripture which mentions baptism. Sounds good. (laughs) And so I spend three hours, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. We made it all the way to the book of Acts. Wednesday, we continue, and if necessary, next Sunday, we will continue working on a scriptural overview, looking at baptism in the scriptures to coincide with our study on baptism in the early church. So that, that was one of those just kind of, uh, once again, I, I have the, the, the clear, the, the, the road trip was mapped out, and I take an exit. I, I'm always doing that. And so I know some of you that irritates you dramatically, but hey, it's always fun. We never know where we're going to go, right? I'm, I'm the person you don't want to take a trip with. If you're like, no, I want to get to point A to point B, because if you go with me, we're going to end up at point X, okay? I don't know where we're going to end up. Point Y, point M, point P. So that's, that's what happens when you, when you listen to this podcast. So 
Here's what we're going to do for the Bible study exercise for this week. I haven't even looked at where the curriculum wants us right now. I will be using, I, I, trust me, I'm going to make sure you get the most out of everything. I'm, I'm going to make sure you don't get, you don't feel ripped off. I don't want you to be disappointed, discouraged, despondent, angry, frustrated. I'm going to make sure you're happy, uh, but, but I will do everything I can to look at the curriculum and come up with a plan. But in the meantime, I have a specific plan for you. Are you ready? Step number one. Download the U version Bible app. Please download the U version Bible app. We have talked about this many times. Please download. I need you to make this a priority right now in your life. Okay. You need to download the U version Bible app. Sometimes in the in your app store, it will just it will just be called the Bible app. The Bible app. It's been downloaded 7.9 million times in the Apple App Store. That's insane. The Bible app, uh, you'll see it's a, like a little red Bible. It says Holy Bible. It's it's very noticeable. If you can't find it that way, just go on Google and type in version Bible app. That's U Y O U version, obviously, V-E-R-S-I-O-N, version Bible app, and then, well, It'll give you a link to download it for your particular device. So that's step number one. Download the YouVersion Bible app. Step number two. Once you download the YouVersion Bible app, once you download the YouVersion Bible app, let me see how easy this is for you to find. All right. Once you download the YouVersion Bible app, um, at the bottom, you're going to see some tabs. Home Bible Plans. Go to Plans and then hit the little search bar. Type in the seven signs, the seven signs, right? Uh, Seven signs. Let's see here how quickly it shows up. Okay, yeah. Type in seven signs, hit search. You're going to see a plan called Book of John, the seven I am's and seven signs of Jesus and John's gospel. It is a seven-day reading plan, all right? The seven I am's and seven signs of Jesus and John's gospel, seven days. It's like a bluish uh, background with a little plant over to the right. It says, Garden City presents Book of John, the seven I am's and seven signs of Jesus and John's gospel. I want you this week to participate by doing that Bible reading plan, which I have subscribed to. I have it right here. We're back. We're back. I think we lost connection for just a minute. I hope we're okay. I hope we're okay. I don't think we lost connection at all on the other platform. All right. So I think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. I'm going to, I'm going to press on. I don't like when that happens. So, all right. Okay, good. Um, someone says, I can hear you again to the person who says, I can hear you again. How long about when, what was the last thing I said before we <laughs> lost connection? That is so weird. It's just so random. So on one platform, we were perfectly fine. On the other platform, we started, we disconnect. I, sometimes it makes no rhyme or reason. I'm telling you, we got it. I got to get a new, uh, we got to buy a new computer. We got to buy a new computer. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, so um, I'm going to wait for the, it's, it's about, there's about a two minute delay. So I have to wait for them to tell me, I want to know exactly about how long we were off the air and then we will, we will put this all back together. Oh, I so apologize. Ugh. Nothing, 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 nothing bothers me more than a live broadcast getting messed up like this. It was probably 20 seconds. All right. It was probably 20 seconds, but it turns into two minutes because I have to try to figure everything out. All right. So let me explain. For the Bible study exercise this week, I need you to number one, download the U version Bible app. The U version Bible app. It may be in your app store, just referred to as the Bible app. If you can't find it in the, your app store, just on Google type in U version Bible app. It'll take you to their web page and then you can download the app from there. Once you download the app, then I need you to go to the tab that says plans. Hit the little search bar. Look for the seven I am's 
and seven signs of Jesus and John's gospel. You maybe will just be able to type in the seven signs or seven signs and be able to find it, but the reading plan is called the book of John, the seven I am's and seven signs of Jesus in John's gospel. It should be very easy to find. Once you find it, it's a seven day reading plan. It's a seven day reading plan. That means it's not, it's going to take too much of your time. You should be able to fit that in with everything else you do. Please subscribe to it. All right. Please subscribe to it. The seven I am's and seven signs of Jesus and John's gospel within the YouVersion Bible app. Now, if you remember in this study, this Bible study exercise, while we were looking at individual chapters in the gospel of John, and we're still going to be working on some of those chapters, we realize that the gospel of John is structured in a very unique way. Really, in the first half, you have the seven signs. And then in the last half, you have the seven I am's. And I started working on how are these two connected? How are the seven signs connected with the seven I am's? And we've been talking about that. What I want to do now is is give you for the next seven days this reading plan, and we will be talking about it. Maybe we'll be talking about it next week at Victory Baptist Church. I wanted to talk about it yesterday, and then I got all sidetracked with the baptism thing, as we always have so much going on. But I at least want to get you started on this because it offers a unique concept that I have not given much thought to, which adds another layer. You, so and think of about it this way. You've got seven signs, seven I am's, but you may have something else to consider. Let me read from day one of this reading plan. All right, here we go. This is from day one of the reading plan. John's gospel begins with John describing to us the glory of the one who is word made flesh. John understands Jesus to be the one among the three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the beginning, the word and the light that breathes creation into existence. He understands Jesus to be the fulfillment of the tabernacle, God dwelling among men. And he understands Jesus to be the one that gave the law to Moses. He also understands that Jesus' task was to take on human flesh and make God fully known to humanity. John quickly proceeds in his book into the second section, John 1, 19 uh, through chapter 12, verse 50. After the prologue, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Let me read, okay, let me read this all together. It's kind of the way it's written. John quickly proceeds in his book into the second section. John 1, 19 through chapter 12, verse 50, after the prologue, which is John 1, 1 through 18. So you've got the prologue, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Then immediately he goes into the second section, which is John 1, 19 through chapter 12, verse 50. And writing about some of Jesus' particular miracles and saying, the first of which is his changing water to wine, to demonstrate how Jesus' heavenly deity breaks through and out of his skin covered humanity. John does this intentionally, but not before he recognizes, uh, but not before he recognizes that it is John the Baptist who came to prepare the way for this man, Jesus, a man whose ministry we are to behold. Though John the Baptist refutes being called Elijah, one of John's aims in writing his gospel. Now, This is the part I want you to pay close attention to. Though John the Baptist refutes being called Elijah, one of John's aims in writing his gospel was to structure his book in such a way that helps us as the reader to understand John the Baptist's role in preparing the way for the Messiah. Jesus called him the Elijah the Elijah who was to come. In the same way that Elijah prepared the way for Elisha's ministry, John the Baptist prepares people to meet Jesus, the one greater than Elisha. As you go through this study, see how John intentionally structures 
the first half of his book around, now here is the, the key phrase, the revisited miracles of Elisha. To interpret John rightly, we need to observe that Jesus' ministry is anchored in the Old Testament and that every character of the Old Testament points to the work that Jesus came to accomplish. In John's book, uh, in John's book are paired together seven signs from Jesus and also seven I am sayings that John links together. John does this to show that not only did Jesus perform the miracles of Elisha and better, but he also affirmed himself as God and as the I am of the Old Testament. So this reading plan is going to link together the seven signs, the seven I am's, and then miracles of Elisha in the Old Testament. Now, you, as you go through it, it's up to you to determine, is there a clear link? Is John really trying to connect Elisha's miracles in a sense, almost they're redone in a different way in the life of Jesus? Uh, is that, is, is, is this really happening or is this us imposing a, an, an idea upon the text? I want you to spend this week going through this reading plan. It should not take you very long at all. All right. That was the entire devotional for day one. Now, some of that needs to be read two or three more times to really soak it in, but you can see what they're attempting to do. Now, the first reading, the first reading is 1 Kings 17, 8 through 15. The second reading is 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. The third reading is John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And then the last reading is John 15, 1 through 11. Now, you're connecting a lot of things going on there, a lot of things. Now you can, you'll have to read it and go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the, and, and, I, and I can't, and I want you to actually like, I don't want to give too much away. I want you to struggle through each one. I want you to go, oh, there is a lot of similarity here, but I don't know if there's a connection. I don't know if we even need a connection. If there is a connection, does, does, does it make it more important or less important? How does it impact it? Now we're still trying to connect the seven signs with the seven I am's. Some of you have already been working on that. This will add to that, and this will add just an extra layer that at least someone out there thought, oh, Elisha's miracles, Jesus' miracles. Elisha, Jesus, seven signs, seven I am's. Put it all together into one reading plan. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that's important, all right? And just so that you know, just so that you know, on the Bible app, which is great if you don't have time to read it. Okay, I just pulled up the first reading, right? Right here, there's a little uh, play button. What, just, just hit play? And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon. All right, there we go. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee, the, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And she called uh, to, she, and he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, and the, as the Lord Thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not to fear not go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of mill shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fell until the day that the Lord standeth, uh, sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Now, my first thought was, wait a minute. 
that's Elijah. That's not Elisha. All right, so why is that so reading? Two, does that really, does that connect to water into wine? So would, would you connect that to water into wine or would you connect that to the feeding of the multitude? Right? I mean, at, at least it raises that question. The second one is 2 Kings chapter 4. Now, this is Elisha. Uh, now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in thine house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in thy in the house, save a pot of oil. And he said, Go borrow the vessel abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come into, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour pour out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So he went from So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said to her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil, pay the debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Now, is that connected to the water and to wine? You got vessels, water into wine. You got water pods. Is is that connected? Now, I'm reading through them relatively rapidly because I'm not trying to, to take these apart or expound them. What I'm trying to do is to get you to look at this reading plan for the next seven days and really dig into it and think about it. Talk about it. Discuss it. You may dis you look, we're not bound by it, but I wanted to add this to our work and our discussion about the seven signs, the seven signs in the gospel of John and the seven I am statements, right? So I'm almost doing the entire first day of reading for you. All right. Again, it is called the garden city book of John, the seven I am's, seven signs of Jesus and John's gospel reading plan is available free on the YouVersion Bible app. Download the YouVersion Bible app. Sometimes it's just called the Bible app. Once you download it, go to plans, do a search, find it, subscribe. If you cannot find it, email me at newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. And I will send you the link immediately. Obviously, it's free. Okay, so you don't. You know, you're, you're, it's one of those things that's we have so many things available to us for free. We should make use of them. You may not. You this may not be of any help to you. May not be of any assistance. But I know this: you're spending time in God's Word for the next seven days, and you're spending time in the Gospel of John, which is what we've been doing for the Bible study exercise. You are working on the seven I am's. And the seven signs, which is another thing we've been trying to accomplish in the Bible study exercise. And you get to add in verses and passages from first and second Kings, where you're dealing with Elijah and Elisha. I mean, come on, what more could you want? And you get the opportunity, hopefully, if you have anyone around you, discuss it with them. And if you don't have anyone around you to discuss it with, contact me. We will discuss it. All right. Because I want us to get the most out of it. There we go. I want. I want to. I want to go back to those. Oh, I want to go back to those miracles. Oh, there's a lot. So, like, I, I don't know how you uh, handle those miracles in First Kings and Second Kings. I don't know. But it is interesting connecting. Like, I. I don't know if you can. I say I don't know. Is remember the dev- the devotional said? Let me use the exact words they use. That as you go through this study, see how John intentionally. So they, I think, the Gospel of John. John intentionally structures the first half of his book around the revisited miracles of Elisha. That he's taking the miracles of Elisha and revisiting them because Jesus, in a sense, revisits them because Elisha. 
But see, isn't John the Baptist connected to Elijah, not Elisha? So I guess in the same way, all right, so I guess this is what they're saying. Elijah prepared the way for Elisha. John the Baptist is connected to Elijah. So he's preparing the way for Jesus. So Jesus' miracles were, will correspond with Elisha's miracles. That seems to be, that's, that's obviously the way this is working. All right, so I, I had, to, had to think about it in real time to really try to figure this out. So John the Baptist, in a sense, in, this, in, the, in the way they're picturing this, is basically Elijah, not, you know, not really Elijah, but he's Elijah in a sense. He's in the same spirit of Elijah. And as Elijah prepared the way for Elisha, John the Baptist prepares the way for Jesus. So as we look at the miracles of Elisha, those miracles then will show up in similar ways in the, in the life of Jesus. Now, that, that's the hypothesis. That's the thesis. That's the theory. You tell me what you think. Oh, I want to do more, but... There you go. And I do apologize for the uh, the the delay, the 20 seconds or ever how long we were off the air. I will go back and listen to it. And if I need to, I will edit this out and fix it and then get it all ready to go so that we can upload this and it'll sound as professional as humanly possible. All right. Oh, see, I hate these episodes because like I feel like I need to do something, but. These episodes are designed perfectly for the Bible study exercise because I'm trying to get you involved in doing something. So dig in, let me know. If you cannot find the reading plan, let me know. If you can't find the app, let me know. Whatever you need, I will help you. Uh, and let's, uh, let's dig in this week and see. You will probably hear maybe, I'm going to try to utilize maybe today's focus. I haven't done one of those today. I needed to start with that, but... We needed to do the Bible study exercise because it's Monday. So I've got, you know, always have 50 things to do at once. But um, I will find a way to try to bring some of this in to as many different podcasts so that no matter what you're, you know, if it's a today's focus, Bible study exercise, I, um, maybe next Sunday, some of this will show back up in other teaching. So that don't feel like I'm just saying, hey, you go do the work. I'll, I'll make sure um, I bring it in in different ways so that you can uh, really benefit from it. All right, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Let's dig in. Let's see what we can find, and let's make the most of it this week. All right, thanks for listening. God bless.